we visited a fast food restaurant that opened in 79 AD. And today, we're giving our review. You're listening to Travel FOMO, a podcast for people self-diagnosed with wanderlust. Thank you for tuning into the Travel FOMO podcast. I am your co-host, Jamin Houghton. And with me is the person that gets happier and happier the further south that we head, Hillary. Yes, (laughs) especially in Italy. Yes, we are in the middle of season seven, our Mediterranean Europe season. We are going all over the southern part of Europe and on into Greece. But today we are in Italy. We have made our way from Florence down to Naples. Yes. Oh my goodness. So now we're like really, we're on the coast Mm -hmm. and we are really getting into the heat of the summer and the heat of Italy. Yes. (laughs) We're starting to feel it. Yeah. The, uh, the rest of our trip was very, very hot from this point until we made it back to England. Yeah. 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 Lots of, lots of hot places, but if they are tropical hot places where you can get in the water and see cool stuff like it's okay it's totally worth it absolutely (laughs) and we didn't stay in naples very long we were actually only there one night yes and it's a good thing yeah yeah it uh naples was not our favorite no and you know i hear that from others too (laughs) (laughs) it's it's kind of a shame because naples you can tell that it's a beautiful city it's just covered in like graffiti and dirt and grime. Oh and my gosh. It's just really rough. Yeah. Like really rough. And, and it was packed full of excitement from the very beginning. Oh yeah. Within the first hour we had experienced so much. So we, attri- we arrived to N- Nepali Central, like the Central train station. And just like we kind of did everywhere, we try to stay somewhere pretty central in the city in an Airbnb so we would come into the central train station and walk to our Airbnb and it was pretty dicey. Yeah, it really was. And smelly. <laughs> it's very smelly. You know, like I don't I don't actually remember the smell, but I do remember seeing poop on the sidewalk. Oh my gosh, I don't remember that. <laughs> you don't? No, but I remember seeing a guy peeing so that is yeah. where i get some of that smell <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um it was, oh that's crazy yeah it was really rough and like just leaving the train station you kind of come up the streets are just chaos yes we were at a crosswalk and i was like i have no idea when we're supposed to walk or or like whatever and eventually we just end up like crossing the street we nearly get hit by a car No rules. You could tell the traffic didn't obey rules. Yeah. It was just like, go and like hope for the best. Yeah. And we didn't go far down the sidewalk and we saw somebody who I'm pretty sure he did get hit by a car. Yeah. Which was unnerving because you aren't exaggerating when you say we never, we nearly got hit by a car because mm -hmm. literally there was like slamming of brakes and a honking of a horn. Yes. At, like at some point in the scenario. It was right. crazy. Yeah. Like we, we barely made it across the street, almost got hit by this car. And this, this guy is laying on the sidewalk. He's bleeding. His wife is distraught, just freaking out. Like the cops were there. So the police were there. An ambulance was on its way. You could hear the ambulance coming, but it was and just he was like, madness. This man is like, um, Maybe retirement age, you think? Yeah, probably. Yeah, and he's curled up in the fetal position, guys. Like, it was scary. And I think you even said you felt like he had a head trauma injury. Yeah, well, I remember seeing, like, his head bleeding. That's crazy. uh, So I don't know if he got hit by a car and, like, fell and hit his head or was trying to make it across the street. And there was a car stopped where some police were, like, questioning some people. And so it was a whole kind of thing going on. And, and the wife is just crying. It was yeah. it was kind of scary. It was a really rough way to like enter a city. Uh-huh. And within the like the first 10 minutes of being there just to see all that and like experience it and then it it just kept going because we you know, we had mapped our way and we're going down and we got to this street and you're like I'm not walking down that street. We have to yeah. go a different way. You were like, "Okay, it says to go this way." Like the directions and I was like 
we'll find another way. I'm not <laughs> walking down that street. And we'd already walked down enough streets that I was like, I'm already scared because this does not feel safe. And then I was just like, because we had everything important to us on us. It's not like we were right. just roaming around looking for dinner. We had yeah. all of our luggage on our back. Mm-hmm. It was clear. Like we each had a laptop with us. We had money. We had like things to be stolen yeah, all of our passports and everything like. yeah i was like no we'll figure it out we'll, f- we'll find another way but we're not going down that street <sighs> yeah and i like i haven't said that yet no on our trip no and like and really like all of our way through europe kind of everywhere that we had been i really had never felt unsafe yeah but this was really dicey yeah. And the long way took us past some like construction. We're walking under these scaffoldings and somebody like dropped something heavy. Like I think this yeah. guy like dropped like a nail gun or something heavy and it like slammed down on the metal of these. It sounded like a gun or something <laughs> or like, like, or like the scaffolding was going to like snap and fall down on us. It was so unnerving. All of these things happening along with the, the overall distaste. Yeah. Of your surroundings and then all this stuff is happening it's just like unnerving yeah it was it was so crazy and we finally made it to our airbnb um and we, we had to like do you remember the door to the building uh yes yeah it was, it was like this a, little like hobbit door <laughs> it was like a little like... hobbit door inside a big door and the big door was locked so you had to crawl through the little hobbit door i think yeah it was yeah. really it was like i think that's it i think we have to like crawl through this little <laughs> fake doorway like it was really weird yeah for like getting in that like getting in there and that was just to get in the courtyard yeah and then we got up to the actual apartment itself it looked like if you were watching like an 80s movie about like a drug kingpin <laughs> and he has like a son or a nephew that's kind of no good and like really flashy but in a weird like cocaine kind of way <laughs> That looked like that guy's apartment. That's hilarious. There's all kinds of like oddly shaped furniture and just like weird stuff, like little bonsai trees. Remember the the shower had like LED lights that were like color changing. That was weird. LED lights in the shower and like all this stuff. And the shower was like like a separate room kind of. It was separate room from the bathroom. Yeah. And it was like, you could tell they were like, we made a legit shower. And you're like, yeah, but it's like, it opens up to the rest of the apartment. (laughs) It was really kind of, and then like, it's got all these, I'm like, what are you doing in the shower that you need like green lights and purple lights and red (laughs) lights and blue lights? What? This is weird. Yeah. And that was really crazy. And like, and with a Murphy bed. And a Murphy bed. We're all over the map on this I know. Which, you know, I'm not opposed to Murphy beds because I had one at one point. That's true. Right out of college. Like, I had a little studio apartment when you first met me. Yeah. I had a legit Murphy bed. Yeah, a Murphy bed. (laughs) (laughs) So funny. It was nice and clean. It was very clean. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And everything was great. They left us snacks and a bottle of water and stuff like that. They did a ton of snacks. A whole snack drawer. Yeah, there's a snack drawer with stuff that you could tell, like... This is not something that like somebody left and forgot yes. to take. Like this is intentionally put out by the host. On display and for so us, yes. like great host. The price was really good. It was in a great location mm-hmm. for us. And so yeah. like it was just weird vibes to it. But yeah. Well, and it didn't have any windows. It had one door that yeah. opened up to the courtyard. Yes. Um, but if you did that, you were kind of like right next. It was like you kind of opened up the doorway to like the person like a foot away from you that <laughs> is also opening up their door. It felt very communal. Yes. And I was like, uh. And so we ended up feeling like we were in this like little cave. And we didn't know if we <laughs> wanted to leave because if we left, we had to go back and, back into the streets of Naples. <laughs> yeah, get to go back, back out to Naples. Uh, but we did brave, uh, brave the city. Yeah, um, and I had to go to the pharmacy. Back out. Yes, that was our was, first yeah. order of business. You're still dealing with your allergies, and yes. so. And I remember you were like you were pretty nervous about going to the pharmacy in Italy. I was because I thought they might be like, "You're going to need a, doc- a doctor's prescription mm, to yeah. get Zyrtec," and I'd been running out of Zyrtec, which is why I was getting sick, I think. And it was one of those things where you're like, "Oh man, this is." 
it's just kind of like multiplying and multiplying and I really need allergy medicine. I need to at least go ask if they can give it, give me some, but it was no problem. Literally. It was like, it was a bit of a hole in the wall place. Mm -hmm. Very dicey, very sketchy, (laughs) but I walk in and I'm like, and I'd already kind of looked up like, okay, what's Zyrtec? What, what exactly am I looking for in this language and stuff? And I just held up my phone and was like, this is what I'm looking for. And they're like, yep. 60 seconds later, I walked back out and I had like, it was like eight bucks no big deal if if that i think it was like eight bucks yeah eight euros and yeah 20 tablets of zyrtec which by the way if you need zyrtec in italy it's spelled (laughs) (laughs) z-i-r-t-e-c it was already helping by the time we left naples i could already tell like oh i needed that in my system this is really helping so yeah i was glad we were able to like sort that out because it really did help you a lot yeah like kind of conquer the allergies but Mm -hmm. we went out to have pizza because Naples yeah. is the birthplace of pizza. Uh huh. So and the I'm really grateful for that. By the way, that is like something where you're like, you might not love Naples, <laughs> but everybody loves pizza. Yeah, I really appreciate that contribution. Yes. Um, but we went to Pizzeria Antonio Sobrello, a like famous pizza place. There, it was actually a Michelin starred restaurant. Which is um, really crazy to say. We kept I kept asking you like, are you sure? Like, what? <laughs> like, explain that to me. Yeah, and it was the only Michelin starred restaurant that we ate at on our entire trip to Europe. <laughs> we're was so cheap. This pizzeria in Naples, but the pizza was actually really, really good. We, they set us outside, so we got to sit outside in front of uh, the restaurant. Uh, the crust on a, on a Neapolitan pizza is pretty thin, and it and when you think uh, in America, if you get a thin crust pizza. It's going to be really crispy, almost like a cracker crust. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. But there in Naples, like it's a very chewy kind of doughy. It's so um, good. It's like non-bread. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Very chewy kind of doughy. Uh, The toppings were really good. I had like a Roman style. So I think it had some like basil, mozzarella cheese and anchovies on it. And it all balanced really well. It was really good. I think you had more of like almost like a supreme kind of yeah, pizza. Yeah, um, And we're sitting there eating our pizza, which if you want to see the pizza, you can go out to the YouTube channel. Like we filmed that. And so you can you can actually you can see the gangster apartment and the, and the pizza. And we're there. literally sitting out on the street as we eat this pizza. Like, yes, it, it they made it, you know, they kind of positioned it as like you like sit on the patio and you're like no i'm just like on the street (laughs) is what i am but that's not um normal like that's common yes yeah that's a very very italy kind of thing but in naples like it's really busy and there's like little like vespas flying by and stuff like that but on two separate occasions guys came up to us offering to sell us socks out of like huge trash bags (laughs) and they weren't even like showing you what kind of socks they had they were just like hey uh socks you need some yeah. socks and i asked the first one i was like what and he like pulls a pair up out of this massive trash bag it's just like white tube socks yep that's like nah bro i think i'm good and like this huge black trash bag <laughs> yeah. they're they're hauling this huge trash yeah. bag around like selling socks out of them it's like a santa sack of socks that oh my gosh that, it was so funny we just kept cracking up at this idea that like you just walk up to people sitting there having dinner in italy <laughs> and just be like you want some socks <laughs> right it's so funny oh but we we did go have some gelato and the gelato in naples was odd as well it was a bit like really memorable. Yes. So I ordered some gelato. I got two different kinds. One was like a chocolate chip and one was a salted caramel. Mm. But the salted caramel, it was cold, but it was almost not like gelato. It was just yeah. like a big glob of like yeah, caramel. Uh-huh. It was literally... Honestly, that is a really good reason for anybody who's like debating whether or not you're going to go to YouTube and watch the video. (laughs) You should go see the caramel, supposedly ice cream, but it's just like a big old blob of like caramel that's just 
thin enough you can eat it. <laughs> yeah, like a like a scoop of cold caramel. I had one one bite and I was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy, but it was it was kind of fun and different. If you're listening to this, you like a good adventure. And if you like a good adventure, you might enjoy following the fights. It all started with Mars and Ashley's bold decision to travel full time in their converted Sprinter van. Fast forward six years or so, they've seen all 50 states and backpack countries like Thailand and Guatemala. It's been one daring decision after another, and now they're braving another big adventure, building a creative retreat in the Colorado Rockies. Find out what life is like when you take risk. Follow the fights on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Really? I mean, that's all we did in April. Yeah, we, we were went there into for a such a short period of time. Yes, yeah. Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, because we were getting up then early the next morning to go to Pompeii. Yes. And Pompeii was incredible. You guys, if you've been listening to any of our podcasts, you know we do appreciate historical places. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a historical place that uh, piqued our interest. And the way I found out about it, I have to say, is my old coworker, Cody Spain, mentioned it to me. And I, as soon as he was telling me the story of Pompeii and how he'd been, I was just like, what is this place and how have I never heard of this? And if somebody had ever taught me about it or told me about it, I'd seriously did not remember but as soon as he told this story I was just like I've got to go there and literally made a note of it and then fast forward maybe three years you and I are like there yeah <laughs> so crazy <laughs> so thanks Cody Spain shout out to Cody appreciate that um but yeah okay so a little bit about Pompeii Pompeii is an ancient Roman city that was more or less frozen in time in its final moments when Mount Vesuvius erupted way back in 79 AD. Yeah. Which is, if you think about it, like if you think about the ability for us to go back in time and see a city back in 79 AD, that's pretty precious opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And this stuff is just frozen it's been excavated in a way that's just very carefully done so everything is in really good condition surprisingly good condition Mm -hmm. it's crazy um like some of the things you can see like you can walk right into a building with a roof on over your head you can go upstairs yeah like you can i mean it's it's crazy and this is a big city i think that surprised me the most it really shocked me too like i expected like a few little buildings and that was kind of it. Like, it's a massive, like, sprawling city that yeah. you get to kind of walk all over and explore. I know. It's so crazy. And you can tell it's definitely a metropolitan area. Um, it was really connected with Rome. Mm-hmm. So it's a it was an important city to the Roman uh, culture. And around 12,000 people lived there, which is big, especially back then. Yes. I can't even imagine. Like, you guys, I'm from a small town. Like... Our population was never 12,000. They keep getting new information about it as they keep excavating things. And some of the new info shows that the eruption started in the fall of that year, probably in October. The date matters because it changes history, really. Yeah. Like, um, and, and we're looking to understand history and write history as we know it. And so the date really does matter. But um, it was surprisingly not destroyed by lava. Right. You would think so, right? You kind of assume like this this volcano erupted and so there's lava everywhere. No, no. It was actually the um the ash that fell. Yeah. That really kind of covered this whole place. And it was covered under a hill of ash. Losing Pompeii was a really is a big economic loss for the Roman culture. It's a big city, important city. And um one of the things that is really tragic is that a lot of the lower income people, they didn't have the money to leave, which we see that sometimes, right? We see that in floods and yeah. uh, different hurricanes and things that happen. People can't afford to leave and they have nowhere to go. So they stick around and it could mean life or death for you, your economic status. And so um, a lot of the people that died there were actually lower income and couldn't afford to leave. And um, they died from the hot ash falling That's on crazy. them. That's crazy. 
mothers and fathers were dying holding their children. Husbands and wives, families were like dying in each other's arms. It's it's really tragic. And we'll tell you a little bit more about how we know that um, Mm -hmm. as we kind of talk more about this. But um, people died from the ash, but also from the toxic gases. Ironically, the ash is also what preserved their bodies. So it's kind of interesting. But um, yeah, yeah. because it was actually found under a hill of ash that was like 24 feet deep. Whoa. And so it's it's just been buried and, and sort of like locked in time. If you've seen pictures of Pompeii, you've saw, probably seen pictures of like the bodies being preserved. And a lot of people, and myself included, are under the impression that the, that people were like frozen and like turned to stone somehow. Right. And that would be an easy assumption. It's what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. Because they look like pieces of stone, but that's not actually what happened. Archaeologists that were excavating Pompeii started to discover that they would find pockets in the ash as they were pulling ash back. And they realized that those pockets were left by decomposing remains. And so what they started to do was have, when they were, they would discover a pocket, they would fill it with plaster and then excavate all around it. And it would leave these plaster molds of these people in the places where they were in their final moments. Um, and you can see them. There's, there's several of them in different places. There's a few in the museum and there's some kind of set to the side of a vineyard. There's another one in like the bathhouse and you see these people sort of like frozen in their last moments. And it is a really, really powerful yeah. thing to see and such a reminder of what a tragedy it really was yeah it's the the archaeologists were really brilliant for for doing that mm-hmm. it's and and they would have to be so delicate about doing this because you're you're literally talking about finding a cavity in the earth and you're like wait i'm uncovering a hole yeah I've got to be really careful that I don't actually accidentally cave the hole in. Right. Yeah. And because I know that this is something is decomposed here. It could mm. be it could be a, a dog or a horse or like mm. any kind of living being. But um, a lot of times it was it was humans. And oh, my goodness. Like you can see. I mean, there are little toddlers. Um, there are husbands, wives. There's one that's a 17 year old girl mm-hmm. I, and I don't know how they know that she was 17 years old, but she's 16 or 17 years old. And, um, and she's in this, they, in the exhibit, they put her in like a glass case. Um, but you can practically see her like gasping for air and, yeah. and covering her face and laying on her stomach. And, and, um, it's very sobering. Yes. Yeah. It's very sobering. Um, because it is literally seeing people in the last moments of their life. It's crazy. Yeah, and it it's it's crazy too because there are other there are other cities that were also uh, preserved like mm-hmm. that were destroyed during uh the eruption of Vesuvius, uh Pompeii Herculaneum is another one and Pompeii was covered in ash, Herculaneum was covered in mud. So it's it's a different it's a different thing but you can actually go and see it as well. Um, Aplantis and Stabiae, I think it is, uh, were other cities that were destroyed in the eruption. Um, and they're all kind of on this coast, sort of in this, in this bay. Uh, and you can see Vesuvius, what's left of the mountain. There's, there's sort of a dip in it where it exploded and like basically blew the top off of the mountain. That's but it's such a dominant mountain. You can see it from everywhere around there like you really from can. naples from obviously from pompeii but from everywhere from vesuvius yeah from, from sorrento like it dominates the landscape yeah and that that is now after having the top of it blown off so it had to be so much more impressive then and to to have this thing that's visual from everywhere and such a point of reference for everything to have that explode just had to be terrifying. Right. 
Yeah, you definitely. Especially back then when you don't quite understand volcanoes the same way we do today. It would be really terrifying to live nearby. Yeah. Um, well, okay, so there were a lot of interesting things that we learned about the city mm -hmm. um, and about how they live. In Pompeii specifically, there are four public fountains. Um, the thing I found really interesting is that the socioeconomic status of people really determined how they lived. Yeah. And we saw yeah. a lot of really nice homes. The rich people had their own fountains. Yes. But they also had like things like a, a version of running water and a version, I believe running water, uh, a version of air conditioning. Like mm -hmm. they were living very smartly. So we like to think that like back in the day, they would never understand how things are today, but <laughs> they do. They had the same things, the same challenges, the same benefits, the same um, desire to have benefits that you can't afford. Right. Like I want, I want the fountain in my courtyard area of my home. Like, you know, yeah. I want, I want a courtyard. <laughs> like I want all those nice things. And you could definitely tell that that was a, a real thing there. And, um, I just find that really fascinating and how many things that we had in common. There were fast food res restaurants. How crazy is that? I thought that was so fascinating. It, it's these, these basically these counters that were built out of out of stone and brick and they had these big vats under them with holes in the top and so food would be prepared brought to these places put in the vats and the vats would have like little fires around them to keep them warm but people would come they would pay a very reasonable price for their lunch they were they were open for lunch so it was for working people that had jobs in the shops and stuff around Pompeii and they would stand there and eat their food standing, maybe talking with people and stuff like that, but eat their food very quickly, leave their bowl and, and spoon behind and head on around their way. It was truly fast food. That's so crazy. And just like today, like you would walk into like a Chipotle and look down and be like, I want this and this and this and this and this, and they scoop it out for you hand it to you and you eat it and go like it's the exact same yeah. thing yeah. from 79 AD. That's wild. And I think there were, were there like 81 of them? I think there were like 81 there fast were food restaurants like scattered throughout the city. So it was, it was a really common dominant thing. It's not like one thing that they kind of speculate like, Oh, this might've been what this was like. It's definitely fast food in yeah. ancient Rome. Yeah, I remember you being like, and I love Italy's food, but for the first time we've been here, I kind of miss Chipotle. <laughs> like, this feels very real. Yeah. And it did. It felt like I could totally imagine standing here and yeah. walking through this line and eating this food. Another thing that um, I'm just now remembering is that they used to have um, kind of like what we would consider dry cleaners, where you take your yeah. clothes to the laundromat and mm -hmm. have somebody, you take them to have your laundry done by somebody else. They <laughs> yeah. had that. Like, it's just crazy. It was This was definitely a metropolitan area, and all of the conveniences that we want today, they wanted it to, and they figured out a way to make it happen. It's wild yeah well and i remember the like the crosswalks yes were, those were that was so cool were amazing like so the streets are basically at a lower level than the sidewalks like it's a good six eight inches lower and if you think about the time like there are no cars so the things going up and down the streets are horses and mules, mules. and things like that yeah. and so there's a lot of poo in the streets <laughs> and like with rain and, and things like that, like it would become kind of a muddy mess. Yeah. And so they put in crosswalks for people to cross. And so these essentially stepping stones are these long rectangular stones, but they're spaced out so that wagon wheels can go through them and like donkeys and horses can make their way around them and still traverse the streets, but people can use them to cross. And they're these big rectangles, exactly the same thing that we paint as crosswalks today. Yeah. Except they're raised stone, which yeah. allows people to like not get messy. Right. So like, you know, there's all that excrement you know, in the street and they get to walk on these raised stones that look so much like the rectangular 
white crosswalks that we walk across yeah. today. It's Which, crazy. by the way, if you go across a crosswalk and do it the proper way and only step on the painted white part like I do, then you're doing it correctly. You're doing it the way Rome did. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh, man, we learned so much stuff, though. Um, Random facts. There were master bedrooms, and those master bedrooms and homes were always near the atrium. And that was because it was safest because there were a lot of earthquakes and fires. Mm -hmm. And it was the safest place to be so that you could run outside. (laughs) Yeah. And all the slaves were far from the front door, and they could never get outside very quickly. Yeah. I was like, that's sad. Very very much the, the wealthy or... Looking out for the wealthy. Yes, wealthy looking out for the wealthy. And then there's, um, there was also a basilica within the city, but it's a little different. It wasn't like a church, like we would kind of assume it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually more like a courthouse, um, but it was an important place, dominant place that everyone gathered. Um, and then also Mount Vesuvius, just interesting fact, it last erupted in 1944, and that is not that long ago. No, that's not too far back. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Volcanoes are kind of amazing to me, especially when you go to a place like this and you see what they're really capable of. Yeah. And and then you start to recognize like how many of them are around and how many like people live in proximity to like active volcanoes is kind of crazy. It is crazy. Okay. So what impacted you the most? Because this was a very impactful place. And I'm referring to Pompeii, not Naples. (laughs) But what impacted you the most about Pompeii, if you kind of had to stop and reflect for a second? You know, the like the plaster casts of people kind of stops you in your tracks. Yeah. You're really reminded of what a tragedy it is. Yeah. Because if you go certainly around a lot of Italy, you see Roman ruins in different places and even through other parts of Europe. Even, I mean, even in England, in Bath, England, we went yeah. to the Roman baths and in Lyon, we went to an amphitheater that was a Roman amphitheater. And so you see these ruins and you, and you go, Oh man, like what would have been like to be here? And you kind of like step back in time and, but it has this very, um, I don't know, sort of fictional feel to it. But when you see those plaster casts in Pompeii, it just strikes you with there was a huge tragedy here. The humanity of it. Yeah. And these people were real people that were here. Yeah. And they didn't survive. And they had their kids with them and, and their stuff. And they're just trying to breathe. And they didn't make it out. It really kind of strikes a chord, a devastating thing that happened here and just to see it all frozen in time like that. But those plaster casts really make it humanizing, I guess. Yeah. 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 Very, very somber. Yeah. What, uh, what about you? What, what, like what was in your mind, one of the more impactful things? Yeah. I would have to say that, um, it was almost like a religious experience for me. Mm Mm-hmm. And here's why. I was also very impacted by the the people, the actual lives that were lost. And in addition to that, the, the way that it brought me back to biblical times. Um, I'm Christian. Um, this was back in 79 AD. So it's the closest thing that I've been to of a place that was the most like where Jesus walked the earth. Right. Right. You know, like 79 AD is after death, after Christ's death, which means that 80 years earlier, he'd been walking the earth and he had been dealing with all the same things that we had been dealing with. When I see that their society was so intricate and um, advanced, I just didn't know. I just didn't know that. Yeah. And yeah, so to like idea, see yeah. that, to see that there were fast food restaurants and there were um, dry cleaners and there were people with the really nice houses and the fountains and the pools and the air conditioning and all the things that you might would want. Um, 
I mean, I'm one of those people. Like, I would want a really nice <laughs> home. And I really felt that in that moment. I was like, yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. I would want to live here. And it just started dawning on me that, like, that's not where Jesus lived. He walked the earth and he knew those people. And he probably experienced the same kind of desires that anybody else would. Like, mm. I want to live there. But instead, I'm living on the streets and I'm living in really humble places. And just, I don't know, just it made um, biblical stories really stand out to me. And it made me want to go to places like Jerusalem and Bethlehem and all and the different places where he actually walked. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like this is important. Except for a lot of those places may have been may fit may have evolved over time. And this is actually a moment in time. Mm-hmm. And that's really powerful to me. It does narrow that gap, like kind of instantly narrow that gap of like, oh, it's so different back then. Right. And you realize now it wasn't. It wasn't. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same. He like all the things that he preached, like he gets it. It can, it's applicable to today. Yeah. I guess more or less. Um, but yeah. So that's the best way to describe Pompeii as a religious experience for me. And just to sort of you know, reemphasize that like AD Anto Domini, the, the year of our Lord, like that starts, you know, at his birth. And so 79 AD is, you know, you're only talking about like 40 years after he was on earth. Oh my gosh. So it's not even, it doesn't even mean after death. Right. I kind of made that assumption, I guess. But like, so that means it's even, yeah, it's even less years. It's even closer to the years that he walked to the time that he walked the earth. So a very, very, very close picture of exactly what it would have been like to be in a Roman town. I really felt like Pompeii was um, the perfect way to use a travel day. Absolutely. Because we were traveling from Naples to Sorrento to visit the Amalfi Coast and kind of do all that. And it was a perfect stop off. They had a place for us to keep our bags they there did. at the park. Great point at Pompeii. Yeah. yeah so um, they have a bag check. It's a really easy solution. A lot of times when we did day trips to places that we had our bags, we had to like find lockers and things like that. And here we just went straight to Pompeii where, where our tour started and, yep. and got rolling, which was really cool. Um, it was really hot. It was really hot. So just be prepared for that. A lot of crowds, a lot of people. Yes. Especially even early morning, we were the we were standing there before it opened. Yes. And there were lots of crowds in a line. Yeah. So just be prepared for that. But even with all that in mind, even with it being hot and all the crowds, I wish we had budgeted more time Yes, for ourselves because it's just so big. Yeah. And there's, and they're continuing to discover more and more of it. Mm-hmm. I see articles pop up all the time in my Google feed about mm-hmm. something new that they've discovered in Pompeii. Good point. Yeah. And so even if you've been before going back, there's more to see now. And yeah. you know, when, if the next time that we're in the area, um, I definitely think that we'll try our best to go back and see what we didn't see before and see what's been uncovered since we were there. Yeah, for sure. There were a few exhibits that we knew of, but they weren't available to us. Like they weren't open. Right. And I would definitely go back to those. One of them was a bachelor's pad, which was really interesting. (laughs) Some other things that people might do if you are traveling through, um, some other things in the general vicinity would be um, you could hike Mount Vesuvius. My friend Ross did that. So it is something that people do. Um, It's a type of tour you can go on. It's not the same as going to the city of Pompeii. Right. But it is related. Um, there are, like you had said earlier, there are other cities that mm. were kind of buried and frozen in time. Yep. You could go see some of those. Um, but then also Naples is nearby. And um, one of the things we did not do in Naples was the underground system of their ancient catacombs and tunnels and cisterns and just a whole bunch of stuff down underground in the middle of the city. Yeah. So if you're staying inside Naples, you should definitely check that out. And we were a little bummed we didn't get to do that. Yes. It was just a little spread out and we couldn't make it all happen. Yeah, it was something that we really had wanted to do when we arrived after we arrived. But 
the trains from Florence to Naples, like the scheduling just didn't work out to get us there in time. Otherwise, I think that would have been really awesome to see. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Well, you guys, we are out there on all the channels you can imagine. Um, One of the things, if you haven't heard us mention it, we've mentioned several times that we have YouTube videos (laughs) and it's fun to get to see some of the things that we're talking about. Travel is all about experiencing things and seeing things. And so we love to be able to show you that in these videos. So be sure to find us. You can find us on tons of platforms. We're always found as Travel FOMO, F-O-M-O podcast. And so you can find us out there on YouTube. You can find us on TikTok and Facebook. Instagram, all the things, all the things, guys. All the places. And if you are ever tired of just hearing us talk, we have a solution for you. Yes. Uh, we would like you to reach out to us at our email address, and that is travelfomopodcast at gmail.com. And what we would ask of you is to just share your travel stories with us. So you can type up an email and we'll read it uh, to everyone and do our best impression of you, whoever you are as we share your story but an even better way would be for you to just record a voice memo attach that to an email send it our way we'll take that as your permission to share your story on the show and we'll just plug it in uh, in a place right like this so that you can tell everyone else uh, your travel experiences whether it's a a funny story or something chaotic that happened a place that you've been that you really want to talk about maybe you have some tips for some of the places that we have been or are going. Yes. We would love to put all of those out there for everybody. So hit us up at travelfomopodcast at gmail.com and we will get to sharing with everyone. Yes. And next up, so we are on our way from Pompeii to the Amalfi Coast. That's right. Oh my goodness. And you've probably heard of the Amalfi Coast. And if you haven't been there, I'm here to tell you, you should go there. (laughs) It's incredible. And it might be my favorite place in Italy. Although I did love Cinque Terre as well. I don't know. Amalfi Coast is mind blowing. If you just want to see some beautiful culture. Yeah. And beautiful landscapes. It's the place to be. So much beautiful ocean and oh my cities on cliffs that just rock your world. Almost heartbreaking. It is just <laughs> awesome. So that is up next week. And after that, we're going to be hitting up Rome and then Athens. And then we're going to do some island hopping in Greece. So the Mediterranean Europe um, season <laughs> is just Still got some stuff ahead, and it is so packed full of stuff. I just, like, I get so excited when we start, like, <laughs> sketching out what we're going to say in these in these episodes because it's just so fun. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of sweaty stuff. A lot of sweaty stuff. That's but right. cool in a not temperature-related way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> you guys, life is short. Wander well. Thank you.